Right, hypothesis testing for continuous um, variables, and by that we mean that we're looking at the normal distribution. But before we go on to that, we'll just uh, go over the steps that you do for all hypothesis testing. So, first of all, you need to define your variable. You'll state your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, and you'll include what the distribution would be if your null hypothesis was correct. Um, you're then going to calculate the critical value or values, um, or the probability of a test statistic happening. And then you'll determine from the significance level that you were asked to do it at whether the null hypothesis is accepted or rejected. And finally, you will state your conclusion as a sentence in context. So make sure that you actually write in words um, whether you accept the, or reject the null hypothesis and what that actually means for the context of the question. Okay, so with the normal distribution, we're looking at testing the mean. So let's have an example here. We've got a machine that produces rope that has a braking load that's normally distributed with mean of 1,000 newtons and standard deviation of 21 newtons. The production process is modified and a sample of 50 ropes were tested to see if there's been any change to the braking load. So we're going to state the null and alternative hypothesis. Um, find the rejection region for the mean at a 5% significance level and then the sample mean was found to be at 1003 newtons. We're going to say what conclusion we can draw from that. So first of all, part A, the null hypothesis is assuming that the mean is equal to 1000, uh, in other words it hasn't changed. Um, so then the distribution for the mean would be, it would follow a normal distribution with a mean of 1000 and the variance is uh, 21 squared over 50, uh, 21 being the standard deviation um, originally and 50 the size of the sample. So then our alternative hypothesis is that the mean has changed. We don't know if it's an increase or decrease, we just are testing whether it's not equal to 1000 anymore. Okay, so part B. We're going to test it to a 5% significance level. Now, since we're testing a change, we'll test 2.5% on either side. And we need to find those uh, critical values, um, the C1 and C2. So if we're looking for a Z value, we, we need it to be equal to 0.975, so that we've got that 2.5% at the top. So phi of our C2 value there, minus the mean divided by the square root of the variance has got to equal 0.975. So then if we read backwards from our normal distribution table, um, the inverse 5, 0.975 is 1.96. Then rearrange that and we get C2 to be 1006. Now we can straight away work out C1 just using the symmetry of um, the distribution which gives us a rejection region of um, x bar needing to be less than or equal to 994 and more than or equal to 1006. So if it's outside of those ranges that we've um, just calculated, it's, it means it's in that 2.5% above or 2.5% below that would mean we would reject the null hypothesis. So part C, our actual sample mean was 1003. Now this is... Um, not in either of those regions. It's not more than 1006 and it's not less than 994. So there's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. We can conclude that the uh, new process has not significantly changed the mean.